Well, good day guys. Um, today I'm going to be doing brake master cylinder and brake booster. So I'll show you guys how to do that. It's really easy to do. Um, tools you're going to need is a 10 mil wrench for the brake lines. Um, and then I think 12 mil socket and a ratchet for the inside of the brake booster. And I think that's about it. If all you're replacing is the master cylinder, all you do is unbolt the four bolts here and then the brake lines and pop it off. Put the new one on, and then uh, that's it. So I'll show you guys how to change a booster and master cylinder on these Toyotas. They're all the same. If you've done one, you've done them all. Uh, the thing I like about these vehicles particularly is that you don't have to rip the dash out or the steering column out to do it. For your 12 mil, you're gonna want it to be as well a deep socket, so because the uh, the studs on the brake booster they're pretty long. If we're gonna start with the brake lines, we're gonna leave this one alone because it just runs into that T there. So we got to do that one, that one, and that one. If you've got them, it's best to use line wrenches, but uh, if if you don't, because either they grew legs or you just don't have any. Um, you can use an open end, but you got to be careful because, especially if you're reusing the brake fittings, if you don't want to run new lines or anything, um, you can easily strip these. So just take your time and be careful not to strip them. All right, with our brakes, or our brake lines disconnected, you might want to put down a rag or something so you don't get it on your paint. But it's not like this truck's really in that great of shape, so I'm not really worried about it. But uh, grab your pair of pliers and take the freaking vacuum booster hose off. Um, also, the Toyota's got this uh, low brake fluid sensor, so just take your pliers and pop a little tab out of the little hole. Set that off to the side somewhere where it's not going to get dirty. And then uh, just give that guy a little yank. Like so. Okay, now the rest of the work is inside. All right, well those four bolts right there, really accessible, those are the four ones we need. And uh, I'm gonna remove this spring and that clip and then just wiggle the pin out. All right, and when you're taking the bolts off, I strongly recommend take this one off last. Start with the hardest to get to one and then the next one, and then work your way from hardest to easiest because as you uh, work on the last bolt. If you leave the hardest one till last, the brake booster will start backing off and it just gets harder. So um, now all that's left to do is give her a little pull and slide the pin out. Now she'll just fall out. Unless the brake lines are in the way. Alright, so we got the old one out came out really easy. So I'll stab this guy back in there and uh, that's, that's it. Okay, so I'll just throw the new guy in there. It'll go in exactly how you took it out. Just like that. And then all the brake lines will just bolt up to how they were stock. So I'll go inside and uh, tighten her down. And then come back out and do all the brake lines. Alright, now we're all done. Oh, except for this. There. Now that's all, all that's left to do is uh, top her up and bleed the brakes. But uh, I can't do that by myself, so I'm going to have to wait till my brother gets home. Anyways, yeah, that's all there is to it. It's really, really easy to do a master cylinder brake booster swap. If you, if you want a nice upgrade, you could go from the 7 8 bore. Or 7 8 Is that right? I think that's right. To a 1 inch bore. These things are way nice. Um, but you need a dual diaphragm uh, brake booster to run it. Otherwise, you're going to be like freaking lifting out of the seat when you press on the brakes. 
Another mod I quite like to do is remove this, the load sensing proportioning valve. A lot of the times, uh, because they're under the frame and exposed to everything, uh, you end up snapping that bleeder off and then it's freaking useless. So what I end up doing is, it's a little bit of a, a job to bypass it because it's got a return line or secondary feed line or something like that but um, basically when I go to redo or when I go to add rear disc brakes to this thing I'm gonna be freaking removing that and then uh, I guess I'll show you guys what I do when I do that <laughs> 